Hello, this is Ed Chapman, and this video cast is going to introduce you to the idea of eukaryote structures and their functions. And we're going to focus on probably the most familiar of all the structures inside of eukaryote cells, the nucleus. Now, we can see inside of cells today, okay, because as we can see in this picture, we now have materials and technologies that allow us to see very, very small structures. Structures that are so small they can fit inside of cells. And one of the more, I think, interesting um, new developments is the ability to label cell parts with fluorescent dyes. And so I like this picture here. It's a good place to start because in this picture now you can see what we call the cytoskeleton, which is Part of the interior structure of especially animal cells and scientists knew that the cytoskeleton was there for a long time but no one could really see it very well because we couldn't make materials that would stick to it that would make it show up very well and today we have these dyes which now make it easier to see the cytoskeleton so I think the the subject of cell biology has gotten really exciting in the last 20 or so years because we can pretty much see so much now that used to be just called cytoplasm of just stuff inside of cells. We know that it actually has a lot of structure and each structure is there for a reason. Now if we were going to make a list of all the parts that you guys are going to need to know for the next test, uh, they're right here on this slide. Okay, eukaryote cells are more complex than prokaryotes and the reason why they're more complex is they contain all these structures and compartments and here I have listed them for you okay all eukaryote cells okay this is true for all eukaryote cells like plants and animals and fungi they have a cell membrane cytoplasm nucleus and ribosomes which you already knew we've already talked about that then we're going to add to this list of things that are found inside of all eukaryote cells uh, the mitochondria the endoplasmic reticulum, otherwise known as the ER, Golgi bodies, and lysosomes. All right. Now, if we just focus on plant cells, plant cells have some structures that are either unique to or very obvious in this type of eukaryote cell. For example, the cell wall. All plant cells have a very obvious cell wall and green chloroplasts. They also have a very large central vacuole. Now, we can't say that vacuoles are only found in plant cells. Animal cells do have vacuoles, but they're very small and, and they have completely different functions. All right. Now, if we're going to look at animal cells, animal cells have a couple different parts that are very obvious and very important to animal cells. For example, the cytoskeleton, which is used for moving things around inside the cell or moving the entire cell, and structures called centrioles, which both of which we're going to discuss later. Now, plant cells, because they are eukaryotes, have all of the things here that I've colored green. Okay, because don't forget, plant cells have things that are unique to plant cells plus the things that are found in all eukaryote cells. All right, animal cells, the same thing. They have all the parts that you find in eukaryote cells plus some parts that are more important or easier to see in animal cells. Okay? All right, now, a good way to organize this information is with a Venn diagram. So in your notebooks, if you can make a Venn diagram comparing and contrasting eukaryote, animal, and plant cells, then you're well on your way to understanding how to tell animal cells from plant cells. So as with all Venn di diagrams, you're going to put in this area things that are comparing okay, what they have in common. And then over here, these two areas is going to be your contrast and your contrast. Okay, so when you set up your Venn diagram, you could, for example, make this side a um, animal cell and this side the plant cell. So these are the things that animal cells have or that are easy to see in animal cells. These are the things that plant cells have or that are more important in plant cells. And in the middle, you're going to put all the things that they have in common. All right, easy way, easy visual way to organize information. Okay. Organelles, you probably have heard this word before. I know I've heard you guys using this word in class, so I know you've, you've learned it in middle school. Organelles are another way of describing compartments. Um, these are only found in eukaryote cells. Uh, prokaryote cells do not have organelles. And organelles are always surrounded by a membrane that separates the inside of the organelle from the cytoplasm. And each organelle has its own function, so that's why they've been named organelles, which is a kind of means like tiny organ. Um, I found this picture of some Tupperware because I always think of plastic containers when I think of organelles because 
we buy Tupperware and, and materials like Tupperware to store things and keep them separate from something else. Okay, now, probably the most familiar and most important of all the organelles is the nucleus. Okay, now the nucleus, and you're going to see this on the next series of slides, we're going to talk about structure first, then function, and then we're going to look at an analogy to try to help you remember this, the relationship between the structure and function. Okay, the nucleus is a bag made of nuclear membrane material with holes or pores in it through which things can pass. Now, because of what the nucleus does, the material that's going to be moving in and out of the nucleus are going to be nucleotides, which are used to build DNA and RNA, and RNA. Um, RNA can move out of the cell, DNA out of the nucleus. DNA does not move out of the nucleus. Okay, the function of the nucleus is to contain and protect the chromosomes. Uh, chromosomes are made mostly of DNA, and they stay inside the nuclear membrane. And also, the nucleus is where ribosomes are built. Uh, there's a special part of the nucleus called the nucleolus, which is almost always colored more darkly. Um, here the nucleolus is kind of a dark blue. This is where ribosomes are being manufactured. And when the ribosomes are made, they then leave the nucleus by coming out one of these pores and going out into the cytoplasm. Now, of course, to build ribosomes and RNA, you have to have the monomers to build these polymers. So that means that nucleotides from out in the cytoplasm have to get through these pores into the nucleus where they can be assembled into RNA, DNA, and all the things that the nucleus makes. All right. So the nucleus is central to the structure of, of eukaryote cells. Now, here's a transmission electron microscope picture of an actual nucleus from a cell. And here you can see very clearly we have a nuclear envelope or nuclear membrane surrounding it. Uh, we have dark material on the inside, which is DNA. DNA isn't always um, condensed into visible chromosomes. Most of the time it's all spread out, so you can't really see the chromosomes. And in the middle, we have a darker area called the nucleolus, which is where the ribosomes are going to be made. Now, a good analogy for the nucleus is the library or the control center of the cell. So I think these two pictures might help you visualize that. Uh, the reason why the nucleus is thought of as a library is because it contains the genome of the cell. Uh, the genome is, you can think of it as a complete set of genetic instructions that the cell is going to need to build, operate, and control everything that it needs to do to stay alive, to maintain its balance or its homeostasis. Uh, the genome, in a way, is kind of like a recipe book that you inherit from your parents. So all your inherited genetic information is stored inside the nuclei of all your cells. So all your cells have their own copy, and it's very important that this copy stays safe. All right, we're going to stop there and pick up with mitochondria in the next videocast. Thanks for listening.